How's it going all you Minties? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Min Condition, and it is finally here. The new printing of the New Warriors Omnibus from Marvel Comics. We'll be taking a look at this and doing a comparison to the original printing. So, let's do it. Before getting started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This new printing comes out on February 17th in the direct market and then a few weeks later in the book market. What we're looking at here is the standard edition hardcover. And to your left, that is your direct market hardcover. And as you can tell, it has a different spine because the spine on this one has an image from the Kings of Pain storyline, which is part of the annual. So as long as I have an image of the dust jacket, I can show you all off the spines in case there's differences. So there are differences in this omnibus. Now, as far as differences, we're also got to talk about the original printing. So the standard edition printing, much like the original standard edition printing, uh, the image is from Scotty Young. The image here to your left is from New Warriors by Mark Bagley. Uh, one of the original creators of the original series. Let's take a look at the differences here from the original printing and the new printing. Biggest differences to me on the spine is of course the logo. Uh, for both the direct market and the new standard edition, they are using the logo of the comic book and not the standard white on black like they've usually used in Omnis in the past. They've also added an image, different images for different editions down at the bottom, but still volume one always gives me hope. And honestly, the back looks very similar, except they've added the Marvel logo down here. Uh, but as far as the font up at the top, that looks pretty much the same. The colors are a lot more vibrant on the new edition. But then again, it's also a new edition. And this one has had a sh fair share of love under the dust jacket. So it looks like the new edition shows an image from issue 25, while the original edition is just black. And then, of course, that has the spine very similar to the spine with the dust jacket. The spine on this one under the dust jacket leaves out the picture down here. And this is the image from issue 25 and nothing on the back here. I almost wish they had left the whole image alone just to have it under the dust jacket. But I kind of like the variation of this leaving out the picture down at the bottom. I wonder if this was the original idea for the spine and then they decided to add an image. Now we're going to do a comparison later on, but let's talk about the book. Okay, so let's get this open. We have some very bright yellow bookend pages, New Warriors. I think this is from the annual right here. Here is your credits, all the writers, the pencilers, and the contents. And of course, kicking it off with New Warriors number one that came out in July of 1990, uh, and then Thor 411 and 412, which came out in December. And I love that about this because while pub like in publishing order, yes, the New Warriors made their first appearance during the Acts of Vengeance in the Thor book, but the story of issue one with the formation of the New Warriors takes place in uh, before those issues. So it kicks off with this character named Ninth Thrasher holding up this guy named Richard Ryder from top of a building. And he lets him go. And Richard Ryder turns out to be a character known as Kid Nova. And he's wondering how this guy right here, Dwayne Taylor, knew that he still had his powers. And Dwayne pretty much just told him, I didn't. I just knew it was inside of you. I thought that was so cool. Then we were introduced to this character right here, Vance Astrovic, who will later grow up to be a major player in the Guardians of the Galaxy. But he's trying to join the Avengers and gets rejected and runs into Kid Nova and Night Thrasher. Then we are introduced to the character of Namorita, or Namorita, depending on how you want to call her. That is Namor's cousin's daughter i'm not sure her origin was retcon she was introduced first in the pages of the submariner back in the 70s but now she is here and she in in this in this version she is namor's cousin and then we're um, introduced to cord who's kind of like the guy behind the scenes prepping everything and then angelica here who was introduced at first in the cartoon the Amazing Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends, or Spider-Man and His Amazing Friends as Firestar. And then she had a limited series for Marvel. Uh, she was part of the Hellions during the New Mutants. Now, all five of these characters are about to come together to fight Terax, and that's the formation of the New Warriors. There's one more. There's the goofball named Speedball, Robbie, who was just out shopping with his mom, and he was a character created by Steve Ditko. The legendary Steve Ditko created him for his own series. He first appeared in the pages of a Spider-Man annual. But now all six of them will form a team 
to beat the crap out of bad guys. So they're not quite Avengers, because they're not old enough. So they decide to be called the New Warriors. As a matter of fact, it's named after what one of the reporters said when they were talking about these New Warriors fighting Terax. And that is the origin of the New Warriors. How awesome is that? As a matter of fact, how badass is this opening? This guy is holding up this old character from the Marvel Universe. Hadn't been seen in a long time. Long before the Annihilation, the DNA saga of Nova. Nova was just completely forgotten. And then they brought him back for this comic book called The New Warriors. And to start it off with this new character holding him up to just make him use his power. Oh, I thought that was so awesome. And then we go into the pages of Thor, which is where the characters are introduced. And this is all done by Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends. And their introduction is a little interesting. Then we have issue two here, which introduces us to the seventh character of the team. And that is Silhouette. Her and Night Thrasher have ties together. He has ties to her brother, uh, Midnight's Fire, who's kind of a jerk. And oh my gosh, I could break down this whole omnibus issue by issue, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, there are some amazing things that happen in here. The most important thing to get out of this overview is you've heard me talk about this series for a long time. How much I love it. And to me, this series in the 90s is always forgotten because it takes place in the 90s. There are some extreme things from the 90s. Like, awesome, I love the Bengal. Punisher shows up. Um, but honest, oh, there's ties to the, come on. The White Queen comes in trying to recruit um, Angel again, Firestar, and the Hellions fight the New Warriors. And these are some new Hellions that even appeared here before the pages of X-Men and New Mutants. The Kings of Pain storyline. Where the hell was I? Uh, yes, I was talking about my love of New Mutants, or New Warriors, slip of the tongue there. New Warriors to me was just as good as New Teen Titans by Mark Wolfman and George Perez. This was my 90s growing up, you know, early 90s, and I, I myself was a kid, so I could relate to a lot of these characters, and the way that Fabian and Ciesa wrote them made them sound like real teenagers, and I love that about this run. This right here is my favorite event in this whole omnibus and that is the forever yesterday three-parter days of present past it's an alternate timeline where it's the united nations of assyria have now become this powerhouse all over the world because of the sphinx and yes wolverine always getting killed off at first of course but to me as a kid i thought this was so cool because you know i'd read days of future past days of future present i've seen alternate timelines before but for some reason this one stuck to me and i thought it was awesome uh a lot of alliances are made between mutants and these characters from the New Warriors. And then they all have to solve what's going on. What made the world turn. And it's awesome. And this is after Nemerita gets her hair cut and Nova gets a new costume. Now, I know one of the questions I'm going to be asked is if this is a good jumping on point. And it absolutely is. I mean, th there's nothing you need to have read before this to enjoy these stories. This introduces you to the characters. This introduces you to their personalities and how they all came together. And then also makes you feel like they've had heavy ties into the Marvel Universe because a lot of them do. A lot of them do have heavy ties to the X-Men or to the Avengers or to the Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't want to spoil anything about that because I want people to read this and enjoy it because it's one of my favorite books. I may do a actual review of it or maybe get the Astonishing Melanie to do a review just to see her thoughts and as a new reader coming in, or maybe just wait until I come back to old reader, new reader to do a proper in-depth review of this. So, it shows these characters grow from these adolescent teenagers, from these kids that don't know anything about the real world, or not just super heroics, but the real world issues. Like, each one of them seems so real. Angel lost some of her family. Uh, Vance has issues with his abusive father. And, I don't know, it, it was just amazing to me how all these characters felt real. And yes, there is, of course, an overall epic storyline going on. Uh, this is where uh, Rage ends up joining, and he gets kicked out of the Avengers for stealing the Quinjet. Uh, but there's ties into X Force because at the time, you got to remember that Fabian Niciesa was also writing uh, X Men, he was writing X Force, so he was throwing in all these characters and ties into X Men to try to make this book sell. But at the time, it didn't need help because this book was selling. It was one of the top selling books for Marvel, and it, there is a reason for that. Oh, yes, the folding circle, all led by the left hand here. And what's interesting is that some of these characters, I love it because they were forgotten for decades. And I recently saw some of them. This is why I tell everybody 
you to check out Ironheart by e-viewing. But my love of New Warriors knows no bounds. Like, I love this series so much. Um, it, it got me. There are some powerful emotional moments, especially later on, uh, between Vance and Angela. Ah, man. And then, of course, there's plot twists, and there's betrayal, and this is issue number 25. This one actually had a die-cut cover. The only thing that stays is Dwayne uh, Night Thrasher's face, and this image appears. And yes, Darkhawk ends up joining them for a while, but a lot of revelations are found in here, a lot of crossovers uh, with the New Mutants and the X-Men at first, and then their own standalone stories. There's relationship issues, uh, there's identity issues, oh, this is a wonderful series that should not be overlooked because it's in the 90s. There are some amazing series that happened in the 90s. Let's look in the back here for some extras. So we have a couple of Marvel Age covers. I used to have that, actually. The interview with Fabian Iciesa, how he took over... How he was pretty much handed the role of a writer for New Warriors. Because, as I mentioned, it was Tom DeFalco and Ron Frentz that had created the characters in the pages of um, uh, Thor. But it was behind the scenes that they had already started working on this series, uh, Fabian Isis and Mark Bagley. Of course, Mark Bagley went on to do Amazing Spider-Man, but he stuck with this for 25 issues. Uh, here's some Marvel swimsuit pinups. Yes, the trading cards. It's Arthur Adams. Some great artwork in here. And then the Kings of Pain promotional artwork. And actually, the Kings of Pain, I'll go back to that. The script here. And here is the New Warriors. This is uh, what they look like. Actually, they were called the Young Warriors at first. Original sketches. And then character designs by Mark Bagley back here. Character studies. Cyanex. I didn't even get to talk about them. Uh, but what I did want to show... Maybe I'll do it when I do a comparison... Here's the introduction to the trade paperbacks. And speaking of trade paperbacks, here are all the covers to the trades that were previously released from Marvel, collecting issues of the New Warriors. Now, this book retails for $125 and has 1,064 pages. Let's look at the binding. So here is what the eye looks like. It is sewn binding. Uh, there is a little bit of gutter loss from what I noticed. This is printed at the R. Donnelly printer. It's not too much, but let's look at the Kings of Pain. That's kind of what the artwork I wanted to show. Just wanted to show a comparison here in between the original printing and the new printing. Uh, the original printing looks a little bit darker as far as the colors. By the way, the covers are done by Mike Mignola. That's why I love this, and I wanted to show the Kings of Pain. Uh, the page count is identical. Here's part two of this one, and this one is unique because Mignola provided all the covers for the Kings of Pain with the exception of this one because this is the one that he just inked so it's Mark Bagley inked by Mike Mignola love that I'll try to show some spreads here but here's what the very beginning looks like uh, the book is laying down both of them are laying down rather well I, said, I think I must have read this uh, I don't know six seven times I love the new warriors uh, and this one I just literally open properly uh, to do this so there you go Let's look at the ending towards the end. My original printing trying to open up a little bit while the new printing is laying down better. Here's one spread I wanted to show that doesn't show any spoilers, but as you can tell, there is a little bit of gutter loss in the new printing. Uh, the original printing shows more of the artwork here. Not that much because you still lose uh, Nova's helmet up there, but you don't even see much of his head up here. Uh, that's just one example. And just one more splash page so you can see the differences. I know it doesn't bother some people, but I always like to point it out. Um, actually, both of these look the same. That's my dog up there asking to be fed. So that, as they say, is that. Now when the book comes out, you can purchase it from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online source for collected editions up to 50% off. Retail price, Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on excellent packaging, so your stuff gets to you in excellent condition, and they have amazing customer service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And for all you minties that are watching, if you're a first-time customer, don't forget to mention that Near Mint Condition sent you their way for a promotional credit on free shipping on your next order. Now, this is only for U.S. customers. CheapGraphicNovels.com, your source for the hottest books, with deep discounts, customer service, and excellent shipping that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count, the content, and the build of this omnibus. And of course, the comparison to the original one. Let me know in the comments down below if I have piqued your interest talking about New Warriors for the last few years on my channel. If you already have it, if you're upgrading, if you're hoping for a volume two, 
Uh, I would love to know all those comments down below, and you know I'll, I'll always reply back to my comments. Uh, please don't forget to hit that like button and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.